First of all, it's a pleasure having you back on Sahara TV, State of the Nation. Uh, let's start with uh, the president's medical tourism. The president, uh, General Muhammad Buhari, has frequent medical trips abroad, has raised a lot of legal uh, policy and uh, social uh, issues. And uh, with questions that have been raised as to the power of propriety of such uh, med frequent medical trips abroad, uh, what's your reaction? My reaction is that we have to uh, take a look at the things that the president himself said when he was gone in for presidency, especially on the issue of medical tourism. He condemned it, you know, vehemently, and then uh, promised Nigerians that when he is elected, he will ensure that he fix our, our health care sector. He made that promise. And so I am bothered. And since then, nothing has happened, nothing has changed in terms of uh, our medical care. And I felt that this uh, COVID uh, should have taught Nigeria a lesson. And I, I was almost swearing that after this COVID, it would be very difficult for any Nigerian political leader to go abroad for medical treatment. But it got to a stage, got to a stage where the medical people are abroad were rejecting Nigerians coming over because they had enough problem on their hands, you know, in solving. Uh, the medical issues of their citizens. So they were not even ready to take any foreigner. So I thought that would have, you know, really taught us a lesson as a people that the best thing for us to do is to fix our medical care here and allow Nigerians to have the best in terms of Medicare, medical care. You know, And we have the resources. If we don't have the resources, they're different. We have also the personnel, sir. So it will interest you to know that the best, most of the most uh, best doctors we have in the world, in all the developed economies, most of them are from Nigeria. They were all brought up here. Most of them attended the various universities uh, in Nigeria, and then they went abroad. They went abroad because of issue of the condition under which they operate here. And they are excelling abroad. And they're excelling because the structures are there, the infrastructures are there, the equipments are there, and also the welfare, the support you know that they needed from the government is also there. And they're, they're excelling, and that's why our leaders go there for medical treatment. So why is it that we cannot, you know, bring all those infrastructures here, bring all those equipment, you know, now that we have the personnel that also that can, you know, manage our equipment here? Why are we doing this? And I thought that the present, our the current president would be different from others because it's been like that over years, you know. So when he was making those promises, some of us bought them. So I'm, I'm worried. Was the president lying to us all in a bit for him to come to power? Was he saying these things? Because I watch most of the promises he made, you know, which are clearly, you know, are in breach. Was he making those promises all in a bid to, you know, confuse us, manipulate us and get to power and grab power and he's not making, you know, uh, good all the promises he made? So, to me, it's clearly, it's clearly uh, something that should make any, any sane person to be worried. I am worried that our president is presently in, in London for medical treatment after spending six years in office. We have not been able to fix, including the one that is in Abuja there, you know, in Asura Clinic, is not also not functioning. Even the wife mentioned that even ordinary para, paracetamol, you know, is missing. Meanwhile, you budget millions and millions of naira every year. So it's something we should be worried about. And I think that the president himself, you know, in his right frame of mind, we should be worried of, about what is playing out and the role he's playing in Nigerian political history at this point in time, especially with the health sector. And that he also goes for medicals and he does not hand over to the vice is another problem. The constitution is very clear yes. that at any time the president is embarking on vacation, whether medical vacation or no hall, resting, you know, vacation or whatever he wants to, you know, go and do in order to give himself some level of rest. Or he is unable, by virtue of medical issues, not to perform his duty. He hands over, transmits power to his vice. Is there in the constitution? But I don't know when they now start importing 21 days. 21 days provision, sir. The clear definition of 21 days is that if he fails to do that, if he fails to transmit power when going on any you know, vacation, whether medical or otherwise, or is unable to perform, the National Assembly now comes in in order to pass a resolution empowering the vice president. That is where 21 days come in. 21 days after he fails to do that within 21 days, then this people will come in now and do this. But I'm now seeing a different interpretation of the constitution. 
that you have to, it's only when the president will be outside the nation for 21 days he has to hand over. That is not the correct interpretation of that section, sir. The section says anytime he's going on vacation, anytime he's unable to, as a result of medical issue, he should hand over. So I am worried as a person. We must say it the way it is, uh, Tokwe. We must, because we were all well involved in, you know, preaching Buarism, you know, and ensuring that we won't change. And the, he, the change he promised that he was coming to come and enthrone it. So we had a good intention, you know, in doing what we did, you know, at the time by preaching that we need a change. You know, so we're not getting that change. And it would be wrong for me as a citizen of this Federal Republic of Nigeria for me to shut my mouth and then continue to support something that is not right. Oh, by virtue of the fact that I, oh, I was one of those that campaigned for him. That would be wrong for me. I have conscience. And I stand for Nigeria. I stand for Nigerians. Any leader can come and go, but Nigeria remains. You know, so we must be try as much as possible to be upright and say the right thing so that our future, our children's future will be secured. I am not feeling happy, you know, with what is happening presently on the issue of medical tourism by our president. I'm not feeling happy that our leaders, anytime they are sick, they go and take treatment abroad, whereas they can fix the medical, you know, uh, fact sector here. And then allow everyone, ordinary and big people, to enjoy the facility. And generations born and unborn will remember them for what they have done for putting this sector right, putting our educational sector right, putting our life system right. You came in here and I never took light. I barely enjoy light here. You know, sometimes one hour, 30 minutes. I don't, there, are, there are days I will stay here, weeks, I won't even have light in my office. It, it goes on like this for years. I've been here for almost how many years? Over 20 something years. It's been like that. When are we going to improve our system? When are we going to improve our infrastructure? When are we going to live like human beings here on earth? You know, if it's a country that is so poor and there are things that we don't have and all that, I would be worried. But God has blessed us with every, eh? talking with every. And when I mean every, including natural, human, that is nothing that God has not endowed Nigeria with. So why are we not, you know, getting it right in managing our resources to the betterment of every city? So I'm not happy that the president is doing this present. And he's not, there is no, you know, conscience in this. Even those who are supporting, you know, support so blindly and with argument that has no logic, with no reason. You know, they say the way, look at what or not she, whatever her name is, you no know, said about the president. Those, you know, and look at what another governor said, you know, the governor of Zamfara. It's, it's so it's so childish and so hollow. It's a hollow argument. Why would you be talking about uh, attack to the north? You're attacking the north. So President Buarina has become the president of the north. That is that's the argument. That is the, that's what a whole governor of a state in 21st century is saying. It means that President Buari is now the president of of the north and not the president of Nigeria. So nobody can correct the president. Nobody can say the right thing concerning what is playing out. I am totally appalled. I am totally totally alarmed that a governor in the 21st century. We'll be saying this in Nigeria. It's one of the things we are seeing, you know, and it's unfortunate, very unfortunate. Let me also mm. get your legal perspective on this. Mm. The National Health Act, uh, yes. Section 46, uh, lays down the criteria for public sponsorship of medical treatment for mm. uh, uh, Nigerian officials yes. outside of the country. Yes. Uh, it states that without prejudice to the right of any Nigerians to seek medical checkup, investigation, or treatment anywhere within and outside Nigeria, no public officer of the government of the federation or any part thereof shall be sponsored for medical checkup, investigation, or treatment abroad at public ex uh, expense, expense yes. except in exceptional circumstances on the recommendation and referral by the medical board, uh, which recommendation and referral shall be duly approved by the minister or commissioner, okay. by the, uh, uh, as the case may be. Now, the president, we all know, yes. is a public officer yes. who is supposed to go through this. Number one public officer, uh, yes. Before traveling for medical treatment. Yeah, that's right. But it is on record. That, that, that Nigerians have not been briefed about yeah. the existence Compliance. of the medical board yeah. and whether the president himself mm. has gone through this position. Yeah. For sure, I don't think. It, it, mm. As long true. as that has not been made known to the public, even if they come tomorrow and tell you that they have complied with that, that's clearly a lie. Because the issue of governance, you know, requires accountability, you know, and responsibility. You know, if the president has complied with that law, which is an enactment of the National Assembly, what would have expected the uh, spokesperson of the, gov the government or his, uh, the presidency to say, okay, because before the president embark on this medical trip, he has con duly complied with the, the act which you have just cited. And there is no such reference, there is no such mention, there is no such announcement, there is no such public uh, in, in information out there telling us of compliance with this. So it's clearly that the president is in breach 
of his of the enactment and that again is clearly unlawful but, but yes one, one begins to wonder yes. the president's minders themselves are not even helping matter in terms of accountability mm. because one nigerians have not been briefed on the kind of ailment mm. of the president yes isn't that worrisome also and for the fact that they even made the the, mm. the highest statement mm. they've ever made mm. is that the president health is a private and confidential mm. matter. I mean, it, it, what's the legal propriety of that? The if point is that the moment you become a public officer, just like the president now has become number one public officer, he owes uh, that duty of disclosure. So these are things that we need to know. Was it budgeted for? How was it, uh, you know, expended? So this kind of secrecy in running governance, you know, is the root cause of the problems we're having virtually in every sector. State of insecurity, economic problems all over the place, economic woes, many people are unemployed, graduates, secondary school leavers, so many, if you know the rate of unemployment is a time bomb. And one is not surprised with the rate of crime in Nigeria. That is a direct link you know, between the level of poverty and the level of crime. So it is important uh, these things are being corrected. You know, we are not criticizing government for criticism's sake. We are trying to ensure we have a country that all of us shall be proud of, including our children who are coming. Because the question is, what did you do when these things were happening? What did you say? Did you keep quiet? What did you speak at? What advice did you give? We are not criticizing for it. We are also offering advice. There are things we can do with all the money we are wasting in medical toilet. We can use it to build our first class hospitals all over the country, sir. I can assure you, with the kind of money we, you know, even our educational sector, if you see the kind of money that goes out of our economy for our children abroad, we can use it to fix all our universities, both private and public, and have this country as one of the best in the entire world. But we're not doing it because of issue of inept leadership, irresponsible leadership. That's what you get when you don't have correct leadership in power. Let's move away from the president's uh, medical tourism. Uh, yes. Apprehension has uh, actually engulfed all the issues in the southeast uh, part of the country, as, uh, especially communities hosting regional police headquarters, as we have uh, terrorism continuing to attack police uh, force uh, headquarters and Nigerian security forces in the southeast. Even though there have been misplaced uh, uh, discussions about who are to play. Yes. Uh, I would like to get your view on this. The former Inspector General of Police actually blamed the IPOB and the ESC for the attacks. But uh, the governor of uh, Imo State, Wobuzo Zemma, made a statement uh, earlier on today that they hired hoodlums from outside the state and make them pretend to be IPOB members to commit the crime and then leave. It doesn't mean, mean that the there is contradiction then. You know, and it means also that the IG may not have done a thorough uh, homework before making the pronouncement. It's like calling a dog a bad name in order to hang it. You know, one would have expected an inspector general of police to be careful in arriving at a conclusion, you know, in a matter that is so sensitive as that. That the state was invaded, government house uh, you know attacked. You know, the state police headquarters attacked, the oh, correctional center, you know, has attacked, and then re prisoners released. <laughs> and I heard before they did that, they were chanting That's war songs and all that before they attacked. So, one would have expected a thorough investigation to be done after arresting those hoodlums, you know, in order to get the courage. And the, and, the, and, the, and the IG went ahead in order to announce that. You can see now the contradiction. The man that the chief security officer of the state is now saying a different thing entirely. It shows lack of coordination. But above all, when we want to know the root cause, who are those behind these attacks? Because uh, East now is becoming the, the, unsafe, the most unsafe place for you to be at this, at this point. Place? He got a state that people were kidnapping goods, sir, and we're asking for answers. I'm telling you, sir, in the East. And now it's like kidnapping has become entrenched. It used to be white, and we allowed it. Remember, you know, so we allowed it. We must try and stop this, what is spreading now to the southeast, because it will get to a level where that place will not be safe anymore, you know. So I will want the government to do a thorough, thorough, you know, intelligence gathering from the security agencies who should be clear and, you know, careful enough and patriotic enough to give a correct information as to those behind this and get them to, to nip this in the bud. If this thing escalates, 
if this thing escalates, Nigeria, already people are saying Nigerians have, Nigeria have collapsed. Nigeria as a nation have totally collapsed, you know. We've got the world of things now is that Nigeria is clearly on the, you know, on the brink, you know. So my thinking is that the government of the day in the southeastern states should come together and then ensure that the security agencies give direct information that is accurate as to those behind this, get them arrested and then stop this, you know. If it escalates, it escalates, Nigeria is on the, clearly, clearly on the brinks, you know, and it's that very is scary. So that is really, really Tokyo scary. is very scary, it's very scary, you know. So I will uh, advise uh, the security agencies to come together and put their best brain, you know, forward in order to know what is happening, what, who is behind this. What is the purpose for this? What do they want to achieve by what they are doing? Who is their target? What is their objective? You know, so these are things you analyze. Get the best hands, you know, they will get they will get to the root of this matter. Now, when the Nigerian security agencies want to work, Tope, if they want to work, they will get to the root cause of this matter within a, a day or two. But when there is complicity, when there is connivance and collusion, that's when you see things happen. It seems as if our security agencies are caught red-handed. I mean, they are, they are con hands you know, panned down. They are as if they don't know what they're doing. It's because of complicity. If they're not complicit, they will tell you what is happening and then get the root cause of this problem and they will sort it out, you know, uh, very faithfully. So I think that the right thing to do now is to know what is who is behind this and what is the objective and nip it in the body. This is advice I'm giving to all the state governors that they should do it very quickly too. There's no time, sir. There's no time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, one question that is troubling a lot of Nigerians mm. is the fact that the actions and inactions of the President Michel and uh, mm. Muhammad Obama, mm. uh, uh, there seems to be a dissonance from him, what he did, and um, what we see on in Nigeria at the moment. Because it seems not to be able to handle the crisis at the moment. Mm. Uh, do you see the, the country surviving in 2022? Now, it, it, it's important that whoever is in charge of either a country or a state or local government to be sound at any point in time, to be in charge. And then when you are in charge, it, it speaks volume because you will get all the security information you read the newspapers, you listen to radio, all the mass media, you get all your information from every angle. Not only from people who are your aides, who because of their pocket will be telling you wrong, will be giving you wrong information and things are okay. Most times, if you don't go outside them, you will not know what is happening what is in the jurisdiction. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So it's obvious that the president of the country today, from the look of things, may not be aware of many of the things that are happening. Because somebody has said it, and that is Pastor Tunde Bakere, that the, the president that he knows is not the president that is actually destroying his legacy that he has built over the years. Because there is a legacy, which most of us, you know, felt that this legacy, even entrenched, you know, from 2015, for eight years, Nigeria is going to be on a sound footing. That was why some of us marketed Buhari, President Buhari, I follow me. But we are not seeing any of those legacies. We are not seeing any of his characters. But what we are seeing being manifested is clear nepotism, clear ineptitude, clear inefficiency, clearly a man that is not clearly in charge, a man that doesn't even have a feeling that, oh, people who elected him are dying. You know, if he's less concerned. He just wants about himself. That's why when he has medical, he just runs abroad. He doesn't care. Now the doctors are on strike. You are, you know, you and I, you know. And our president is abroad taking medical, and somebody will justify this. For God's sake, who are this? For God's sake, that you are, I voted for the president, me that when the president did wrong thing, I should come and defend that. How can I even defend this? That the president is in hospital in UK, whereas Nigerian doctors in Nigeria are on strike, and Nigerians are dying. Nigerians are not being taken care of. Meanwhile, we elected him. In order to go and take care of us, in order to care for us, in order to ensure that the facilities are okay, in order to ensure that we have first class, you know, medical care for Nigerians. That is the main, main reason why we elected him. That's why we throng on sun, in this, under the sun, under the moon, in order to ensure that this man is elected. And somebody is now telling me I should go and justify it that the man went for his medical because he has been seeing his doctors before he came in. Who does that? Who says that? How do you justify this? How do people sleep? Oh, I am worried. I am worried because I was part of this, you know. So I think that the president should be worried about 2023. 
there may not be a country if we don't, you know, correct most of the things that are happening. And funny enough, as I said earlier, if the president is clearly sensitive and he goes around here, what others are saying and the feelings of Nigerians, you know, most of the appointments he's making, he will be a bit sensitive and say, look, the unity of this country is uppermost in my mind. As a father, there are some things I need to correct. But subsequent things that the president does, both in appointment of all the security, look at the current appointment of the IG2. So does he mean that there is only only some certain persons that must occupy and you are doing it you know you know to anyone can go to hell i don't, I don't understand and people are justifying it and my brothers here in south here because of 2023 because they want presidency in 2023 are justifying it me honestly i'm i can't go abroad now you know uh to go and look forward now to go and work now as what as a cleaner or as what, you know, or in mortuary. You know, that's why we must keep on speaking in order to get a country all of us are proud of Tokwe. I won't stop talking, honestly. But I think that there are people who understand governance that should be given power in this nation in order to correct the ease of this country. If the country does not have resources, it's a different ballgame. If you have the kind right of leadership with the combined factors of things that God has given to us in terms of resources, and they combine it well, Nigeria will be running, not crawling. Nigeria is crawling presently because of bad leadership and also because of also, so basic inf you know, decay in the issue of uh, 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 the federal system we're operating. There is a decay. The issue of concentration of power in one particular, um, um, no, at the federal level, is also part of the issue that people are now saying, can't we decentralize this governance, you know, and allow the federating states, you know, to participate also in governance so that we can see that things will begin to move in the right direction. Of course, having the proper structure, having the kind of leadership combined will make Nigeria to be where we want it to be. But leadership failure with also infrastructure, you know, issue of basic uh, a federal structure that is also you know, improper is combining now to kill every initiative that even if the best hand is elected tomorrow and we allow this structure to continue, you will run into probably enter into a solo with all your best brands. You become a cog. All the factors become a cog. Instead of you know propelling you to excellence, it becomes a cog in the wheel. You can't move. You know, you know when you want to, there is something that is holding you. The structure is is decayed. The structure is clearly, clearly inappropriate. Let's look at Tinker with the structure. Let all of us be honest. Let the houses, the Igbo, the Yorubas, the minorities all come together and say, we must save Nigeria. It's a project. Project save Nigeria and then get the structure working, get the kind of leadership that can man this country and make this country to be. You don't, I don't care where anyone comes from, whether it's our Saib or Yoruba, my brother, or the minorities. What we want is good governance. When we get it from any of these tribes, Nigerians will know. When we get a father that will really play the role of a father, Nigerians will know. But for now, Nigeria is fatherless. Finally, just on, as uh, continuous uh, definitely Yes. Concerning is the federal government, uh, you know, mute indifference mm. as far as this issue is concerned. That's right. Uh, what should be done mm. to bring an end to yeah. this? Considering the backlog. Yeah. When when when, when government is run by compromise, when what is right is not right, what is wrong is what is right in the sight of men. You find a government, you know, running this way. As we are talking, I think parliamentarian staff also. Those who work also, because it was a bill that, I mean, an executive order that the president, it's not as if it was necessary for that executive order, because it was already in the constitution. It's a constitutional issue that even the court of the land has, has also made a pronouncement, you know, trying to authenticate that particular provision in the constitution that there should be financial autonomy for judiciary and also for the parliament, for the parliamentary, you know, people. Is, is there especially. But the president felt that over time this has not been implemented. There has been actually observing breach. So he came up with that idea, you know, of executive uh, bill. And some of us went, I was on channels, I was all over the country, you know, praising the president for doing that. You know, for signing that executive, even though it is, a, you, know, a, you know, airing on the side of surplusage, it is better to air on the side of surplusage than keeping silent. 
just as I want him also to talk about local government uh, finances that the state governors have been tampering with. The issue of security vote that they are using to steal so much money out of the system and keep Nigeria in retarded form. These are the issues that I want President Buhari to have addressed, but none of them has been addressed. So when a standard executive order, I was so happy. I was one of the first person, you know, to come on air to really eulogize, even though some of my colleagues, you know, were saying he was early on the side of surplusage. I asked, especially the president, I wonder that he must also implement it. No soon thereafter, the governors went to him in Asorog. And then was telling him, Mr. President, you have to support all of this issue. Before you know it, a president that was elected by the people, a president that came on that tremendous goodwill, all of a sudden, suppelled out, and backpelled out, and killed his own executive order he signed, you know, and made it not to be implemented because the idea was at every monthly allocation, the money will be taken as source by the accountant general on the recommendation of the uh, attorney general. And then the, those monies will be made available because when the budget is passed, you now divide it by 12. You know how much you go to every of these arms of government at every month. They get it directly. So the governor, the judges, chief judges of the state, the speakers of the house will now know what to do with their resources. They can, they can afford to buy cars if they want to buy or the build houses and build basic infrastructure, have computer systems, build court houses. But we see a situation where the governors will take so much and then begin now to give them stipend, you know, by buying cars and people will present the government. I see they were spending their personal money, the building houses for uh, judges and then making them feel they are doing them a favor. That is a compromise of the independence of that arm of government. The moment we don't have an independent judiciary, the moment we don't have a judiciary that is on the verge of doing justice to all manner of many respective of status or class. You don't mean you don't have a bold judiciary that can adjudicate matters for citizens and declare law and justice in favor of what is right, then that, that country is doomed. Nigeria today is doomed because we don't have a strong judiciary that is bold and clearly independent. Who pays the paper it takes it to? So we, ha we are where we are.